Hey guys, Rich with Rich Rebuilds here, and we're going to talk about my very first electric vehicle dyno day called Supercharged Sunday on Long Island, New York. This event was put on by Evolution Automotive and Chameleon Tuning, along with contributions by several other vendors. Now, here are the cars we're going to put on the dyno today. We got two standard rear wheel drive Model 3s, a Tesla 90D, a P85D, a P100D, an electric DeLorean, a Mazda Miata, and General Zod, my Z06. At the end, we're going to see who makes the most power, and we're going to do some analysis of which car is the quickest and which car is the fastest. Keep in mind, they may not necessarily be the same cars. But before we get into all that, I want to give you a quick recap. I'm going to condense what I saw at this 10-hour event down to 30 seconds. You guys ready? All right. The event started at 10 a.m., and by 11 a.m., it was 105 degrees outside. Now, before I die of heat stroke, I wanted to see if any Tesla owners had any vanity plates because, let's face it, 99% of owners have vanity plates because they need to let you know how creative they are. Vanity plate number one, zero miles per gallon. Okay, nice. Vanity plate number two, what's up? God, that just makes me smile, you know? What's up? How creative. Vanity plate number three, get out the way, get out of the way. Hard work. Vanity plate number four, everybody stand back. Get the velvet ropes because this guy is going to Mars next, apparently. Vanity plate number five, dine sips. Stands for damn, even I noticed the crap electric vehicle owning say. Or maybe it's Latin for onward. Vandy plate number six, 1.21 gigawatts. Sick. Back to the future reference, bro. Vandy plate number seven, NG, we made it. Awesome. What does NG stand for? N nig, we. Oh, oh, sweetie. Oh, honey. Oh, what are you doing? Okay, some more stuff I saw. A child in the front of a Tesla. Cold beverages in the front of a Tesla. Something cliche in the front of a Tesla. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh. Yep, that's a motor, all right. Now let's get to the main event here. First car to dyno is a standard Model 3. The first pass puts down 307 horsepower and 305 torque. The second pass, 309 horsepower and 321 torque. And the third pass, 310 horsepower and 325 foot-pounds of torque. The second car to dyno is my buddy Chris's from EV Tuning Solutions car. It's a standard Model 3. The first pass is 292 horsepower, 292 torque. The second pass is 295 horsepower and 321 foot-pounds of torque. And the last pass is 298 horsepower and 326 foot-pounds of torque. The next car was a mighty P100D, which made 599 horsepower and 648 foot-pounds of torque. The second pass was 581 horsepower and 653 foot-pounds of torque. And the third pass was 574 horsepower and 620 foot-pounds of torque. Next was the electric DeLorean. That put down 132 horsepower and 398 foot-pounds of torque. Next was the 90D, which made 388 horsepower and 495 foot-pounds of torque. Then was the P85D that made 403 horsepower and 579 foot-pounds of torque. Second pass was 404 horsepower and 591 foot-pounds of torque. And the third pass was 403 horsepower with 661 foot-pounds of torque. General Zod, my Z06, made 610 horsepower and 534 foot-pounds of torque. Then it made 609 horsepower and 537 foot-pounds. The Mighty Miata made 111 horses and 97 foot-pounds of torque. Now, a couple more things that I saw are an EV owner fiddling around with something, a badass R8 launch. <laughs> a 
and someone trying to sell some pretty cool products. Is, is everyone of age here? Oh, I like that. You get free beer and an advertisement. I'm actually 16. I don't want to shoot you, man. I don't trust it. Uh, Just tea, why not? They're really serious about fishing. You have an alcohol beverage? Yeah. What? It's twisted tea. It's kind of like water, but it's still good. Rich doesn't drink. I do drink. What do you yeah, mean? one beer and then you're done. Yeah, I know, it's true. Thank you very much. Keep it cool. Thank you. Oh, another advertisement! <laughs> Okay, so before we get into my analysis, you'll notice that the dyno numbers of the cars may not be what you're used to on other videos. Keep in mind, different dyno operators use different gearing. The gearing we used was 115 RPM for a mile an hour to split the difference between the front and rear gear ratios. The front motor spins at 113 RPM per mile an hour, and the rear spins at 118. That's a 9.34 front reduction and the 9.73 rear. To get the most accurate numbers, we'd have to run the car with 118 RPM and measure the force on the rear roller, then run again to 113 RPM and measure the force on the front roller, then do a bunch of math against the combined horsepower and average the torque numbers to be able to see exactly how much is being applied per motor, but ain't nobody got time for that. Tesla's are also a pain in the ass to dyno because quite frankly, they're so damn powerful and the dynos freak out in a lot of cases. There were times where the P100D was spinning the rear roller faster, the dyno applied the brake momentarily to let the front roller catch up, resulting in some weird dyno graphs for the P100D. Another interesting thing was that you'll notice that the P85D made more torque than the P100D. That's because we suspected the car spinning faster than the dyno rollers could keep up, and we applied track bite, which is a traction compound. Once we applied that and the car hooked up, we got a higher torque reading. On the next round of this, we'll see if track bite helps all the cars, but for now, just ignore that crazy high torque number for the P85D, seeing as a dyno is an accurate measuring tool of what the car will put down on the street, and not all cars will have track bite on their tires. Let's see who the quickest and fastest cars here are. The two most powerful cars here are the P100D and General Zod, my Z06. My Z06 made 610 horsepower and 530 torque. The P100D made 600 horsepower and 650 torque. Other dynos are reporting high torque numbers as high as 800 and 900 foot pounds, but we don't care about that right now. I won't lie, a P100D with its instant torque and all wheel drive system would simply erase 99% of cars in its rear view mirror in a quarter mile. It's hands down the quickest car here. However, it's the quickest car here but not even close to the fastest. If you look at the dyno sheet of all the Teslas that were here, there's a huge mountain of torque in the beginning, and after a while the torque decays down to nothing, which is why when you drive a P90D or a P100D, it's fast around town, but after you get into the higher highway speeds, the car starts to fall flat. If we compare it to the Z06 dyno sheet, the power band of the Z is flat and straight. The car maintains its power as it gets closer to red line. Let's look at a real world example, shall we? In the world's fastest drag race, the Tesla Model S outshined all the other competitors as the quickest car there. It did a quarter mile in 10 and a half seconds. But there's a very commonly overlooked number here. It's the track speed, which is the mile an hour. No one seems to look at that number, but it's how fast the car was going when it actually crossed the finish line. The Tesla was going 125 miles an hour, but behind it, the car was going 135 miles an hour meaning that car behind the Tesla is going to pass the Tesla like it's standing still very shortly. Still don't believe me? We'll do a quick Google search on Tesla half-mile races instead of quarter-mile races and see what those results look like. Electric motors are a hell of a lot more efficient than gas motors, but in terms of a high-power application for a vehicle, you're witnessing one of the electric motor shortcomings. Granted, only a select few would even notice this or care, but it's still something I wanted to help bring to light. Well, everyone, thanks for watching this episode. I have a really cool series coming up where we tear into the drive unit from an older Model S to see how it's holding up. It sounds like I'm stalking. I'm not, man. I'm not that weird. You are pretty weird, though. Yeah, I only have that drone fly by your window every couple of yeah, hours. Yeah, what's that buzzing noise? That's something I And if you're a Tesla owner and this episode has made you feel sad knowing that your car is quick but not fast, keep watching as this next scene was taken moments before I was stung by a bee. Oh, bro, those are bees. Oh, shit.
get the lowest model out you can that still has a robust uh, drive, you know, suspension. All wheel drive system. I want to have nice leather, I want to have all Yes, yes, but I'm, I'm thinking like a, a sleeper, like yeah, yeah, something yeah. anybody could throw together. Yeah, like a 90s A4 or whatever. Yeah, like a or something. Yeah. And you can still, that has a long enough engine bay, has yeah, enough yeah. room to throw those in there, you can kind of replicate the same thing. Yeah. This yeah, is, I would do the same thing, but I mean on something that's budget minded, yeah, yeah, anybody yeah. can kind of do that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. You don't even have to use that many batteries, you could use like smaller batteries, your range wouldn't be 300 miles. Right. But you 100, 200 pounds, same power, right? Because you don't need that range. You're just trying to make a right. super car. Yeah, 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 exactly. See, I got a B5 Passat that's full motion. That would be good for that too. Yeah, get down the whole wagon back. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, it's a B5 wagon. Yeah, yeah. 